Today on Trying Not to Sink, we finished the solar panel lithium battery installation by adding a charger to manage our boat's alternator. My name is Ed. I'm an ex-musician, turned politician, turned accountant, who now imagines himself a sea captain. This is Lynn. She's an ex-model, retired photographer, and the love of my life. Three years ago, we bought a boat. No experience and completely clueless. Since then, we have traveled over 10,000 miles along the Atlantic coast and the Bahamas. Join us as we continue the adventure, exploring exciting places, meeting new people, and having the time of our lives while trying not to sink. Back here at the boat, and I'm getting ready to install the final piece to my off-grid solar lithium battery setup. And that final piece is this. It's an E. Peaver, I'm not sure how you say it. It's another MPPT controller, and let me tell you why. If you've watched our previous videos, you know that I purchased some lithium batteries, which we've installed already. I purchased a inverter charger that will charge those lithium batteries while we were at dock or when the generator is running. Then I installed some solar panels up on the flybridge, which will charge the lithium batteries when, say, we're at anchor and the sun's out. The last piece of the puzzle, though, is something that would allow the alternators on my engines to charge the new lithium house bank while we're underway. Now, there's a couple problems with trying to charge lithium batteries from an alternator. The main one is that lithium batteries uh, will draw as much power as they possibly can from whatever is charging them. Now, on the inverter charger, that's not a problem. It will send them the 50 amps, I believe mine's rated at. Uh, it'll take whatever the solar panels can send to them, but when you turn your alternator on, it will draw everything your alternator can send as well. The problem with that is that alternators are not meant to be run at full capacity at all times. So, what will happen is it'll overheat your alternator. You'll burn out your alternator and, well, you can't have that happening. The second issue with using my alternator to charge the batteries is that my alternator puts out 32, well actually more like 34, 36 volts to charge my existing 32 volt house bank. I have a 24 volt lithium battery system, so I need to be able to knock that voltage down as well. And the solution to both of these problems is installing another solar charger. Now these are basically designed to sit between your solar panels and your batteries and it takes the, the, the wattage and the amperage and the volts that are coming down from your solar panels and converts them over to something that can be used to charge the lithium batteries in the three typical stages of flow, um, of bulk and absorption. However, these chargers are not limited in that they can only be hooked up to a power source such as um, solar panels. You can also hook them up to an alternator. So by getting this, uh, this solar charger, this MPPT solar charger in between my alternator and my 24 volt battery bank, I can drop the voltage down to 24 volts or you know the various stages that I need to charge the lithium batteries. And this is set at 20 amps, so it'll never draw more than 20 amps from my alternator. My alternators happen to be 60 amp alternators, so I figure 20 is probably uh, a, a good amount that they could be running all the time at 20 amps or for at least extended period of time at 20 amps and it shouldn't hurt them. I could have opted to maybe get a 30 amp or a 40 amp solar charger like the, the, like the Victron that I installed uh, for the solar panels. It's kind of a compromise between how much I want to beat up my alternator and how quickly I want to charge the batteries. So I came up with 20, 20 amps. We're typically cruising about five, six hours a day on average, sometimes much longer, rarely less than that. So I figure, well, five, six hours charging at 20 amps, that should do a pretty good job of charging the battery banks. So let me show you the pieces that are involved. First of all, I got this, I think it's an EPiver, I'm not exactly how you say their name, Epiver, whatever, it's an MPPT charger. Uh, it's different than the Victron. I could have gone off a Victron. I decided not to because I wanted them to be separate visually to me when I'm looking at the meters and things and I just didn't want one meter um, for all the different inputs so I'll show you that in a second because I did purchase this it actually came with it um, a remote meter so I'm gonna run the wires to that I'm gonna put that at the lower helm as well and I did purchase a, a breaker so I can disconnect it when I need to of course a bunch of wire and connectors and things like that so well let me get going one thing I forgot to mention is that I need to install a relay. 
Now, the reason I need to do a relay is because an MPPT controller, unlike a controller or that is made specifically to go from an alternator to the lithium batteries uh, or a battery to battery charger, they sense when the alternator is on. You know, they see the spike in voltage when the alternator comes on and then it turns on the charger. A solar charger like this does not have that, it's always on. So if I were to leave it just connected up to my other house battery bank and the alternator, when I'm not running the engines, it's going to try to take power from the 32 volt house bank and use it to charge the lithium batteries. And I don't want that, I don't want it drawing on my regular bank. So what I'm doing is I'm installing this 32 volt relay which is usually used on the heads on this boat and I just happen to have one lying around. It looks kind of ugly but maybe I'll paint it. I'm going to run a wire from the ignition switch to this relay so this relay only triggers when I turn the ignition switch to the on position which means I'm going to run the boat. That in turn will trigger this relay which I plan to install between the existing 32 volt house batteries and the new controller. And that way this will only be operating when I'm operating the boat. I left my butane torch at home, so I'm just going to have to make do with a cigarette lighter here. Well, my bus bars that I ordered never arrived, so I ended up saying hell with it, and I decided to make my own. These are, these are kind of overkill. This is quarter inch thick copper. I really could have got away with 316 or maybe even 8th inch. Um, I just didn't want any resistance in the bus bar, so I went bigger. Nothing Get wrong with installed. bigger. <laughs> bigger is always better. Yeah, right? that's what I say. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you can see I installed the new solar charger uh, right in front of the inverter that we put in. And let me just show you real quickly how it's set up. You can see my original house bank over here this is the 32 volt bank and you can see there's a couple of red wires coming off of it down here i've connected to the positive and negative terminals and ran the wires over towards the inverter i have the negative going right into the inverter itself but you can see that the positive stops at a relay i mentioned before i was going to hook that up to the ignition switch i haven't done it yet which is why both wires or on the one side connected. From the relay I ran the wire over to a breaker and then from the breaker we go right over to the solar charger. I also have their MT50 connected uh, to monitor what's going on. You can program the solar controller using a supplied USB cable that came with it. Uh, however, I could not get the software to work. I tried on a couple different computers, did work out for me. But it doesn't really matter because you can program everything using the MT50 uh, display as well. I plan to run that uh, up to the lower helm and put it right next to the display for the Victron. I'm not going to get too much into how to use this. There are other videos out there showing how to program it. But you can see right now um, the picture of the moon indicates that it's nighttime. It's not really. It just doesn't see any power because I have the breaker off. So let me just turn the breaker on and see what we get here. And now you can see that it turned to 36 volts, which is what is coming out of my batteries right now. I do not have the engine running, but I do have the battery charger on. I'm gonna turn that breaker off because I really don't want the battery charger to be feeding this. And now it should drop to zero, it did. And then you can see in the middle of the screen, I have the, uh, the battery at 28.8 volts. There is nothing being drawn from it. And to the right there is a load indicator. The solar charger has uh, outputs right there. You can see I'm not using them to connect to a load so you can go directly to whatever appliances you're running at 24 volts. I don't plan to do that, at least for now. You can also see that I got around to hooking up the bus bars that I made. 
uh, they came out good. And there is one final thing I did not do for those of you who are looking real carefully. I still have to run the ground wire from the inverter down to that uh, negative bus bar. I'll do that next weekend. Here's a wide view of the entire setup. If you haven't watched one of the previous videos, uh, you can see that on the left I have a solar charger that is connected up to the solar panels up on the flybridge. Uh, the big blue box there is our Victron inverter and the green batteries are the Valence uh, lithium iron batteries that we purchased and then of course my recent install of the solar charger and that is tapping into the house 32 volt battery bank which is charged by the engine uh, alternators so that's the installation uh, the only thing left to do is really run that wire to the ignition switch and um, and then I'll have to test it with the engines running and see uh, see what kind of voltage I get out of it. If you have any questions, just you know, let me know and uh, I'll do my best to answer them.